Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now in the last episode of Kerbal Space Program, we returned from Minmus and we started building our Duna Rover. I have completed building our Duna Rover, I'm about to explain all of the stuffings on it to you, but first I would like to say that I have chosen, from your suggestions in the comments below, I have chosen to name our Duna Deby, the Duna Environmental and Barometric Analyzer, with the Y coming from Analyze, I guess. It's sort of hard to come up with a name for something, Debbie, but Debbie Ramirez, congratulations, I chose your name. Also, I would like to say, if any of you have not already, you should go check out our Starbound series. You can find a link to it in the video description below, as well as a link, the annotation in the top right-hand corner of your screen at the moment. Starbound is a pretty awesome game. If you like Terraria and Minecraft, which I do on my channel a lot, then you should go check it out. It's sort of like Terraria in space, mining and crafting and killing monsters and getting monies, all sorts of cool stuff like that, so you should go check it out. Thanks a lot, I appreciate you all. And don't forget to leave a comment below if you would like to have a Kerbal or a Rover or Satellite or Probe named after you. So Davey, Davey, you are going to go to Duna, so let's go ahead and examine what is different about this rover. First of all, I decided to add some of these lights onto the launch tower because, you know, if we launch at night, I wanna I wanna have some lights, I think it looks cool. But we're going to be using the same launcher that we used to go to Minmus with some very slight altercations to the, the top so that we uh, have enough space to decouple our rover. The rover itself is a feat of modern Kerbal engineering. It has, I believe, eight. <laughs> eight batteries on it, all on the underside to make it bottom heavy so that it doesn't it doesn't experience any sort of top heaviness and fall over and flip and stuff like that. It has one light in the front. It only has four wheels, so we're taking a small risk there. Maybe one of the wheels will break and we won't be able to use the rover anymore, but I'm pretty sure it will land softly enough to where all four of these wheels will survive. We have the seismographer, whatever that thing is called. What is that thing? The seismic thingamabobby. Seismic double C seismometer, maybe? So, to, to see if there's any sort of earthquakes or anything on Duna, over here we have the barometric pressure reading to take air pressure readings. We have the thermometer right here, of course. We have the goo, which we will use to check the goo. Unfortunately, we will not be able to bring a materials bay to do an, using a rover, because that thing is really freaking heavy. It's heavier than, like, the entire rover. So, we're gonna go ahead and skip that. We do have two of these solar panels right here that will never fall off or break. I hope not. So that no matter what happens, we should have enough power to at least, you know, put up this solar panel. This is our primary solar panel. Back up a little bit. This is a 2x3 solar panel, so it should give us plenty of power to run both our instruments as well as our, our wheels here. Since we have more than 800 battery charge, and including the uh, little probe core right here, we should have no problem sending science back to Kerbin. These strange monstrosities on the sides are radial decouplers with parachutes attached. I, I tested this on Kerbin and indeed it does go up and then you can pop these parachutes to hold it and bring it down and once it lands you can pop these decouplers off and then the parachutes fly away and explode so you don't have to worry about carrying the parachutes around and becoming top heavy. It's quite... I like it. I like it a lot. It's very similar to our very old Mars rover parachute manned vehicle thing that we made a long time ago, but I think it's more advanced and we're gonna be doing science with it, so it's awesome. So Davey, we may as well go and launch you. So it should be nighttime right now. Let's see if we can turn on our lights. Where are our lights? There we go, there are our lights. See, they're amazing. I don't know what's giving us power right now, but this doesn't use up our electrical charge. Good to know. Good to know. But yeah, we are basically ready. Going to check the map one more time to make sure that we are indeed at a phase angle where we can get to Duna reliably using as little delta V as possible. It looks like we are at about a 45-44 degree phase angle, which should be perfect. All right, so we may as well start our launch. Turning on the SAS, we have plenty of of SAS modules. We should be good. We do have thrust vectoring on these engines. 
Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off of the Davy. Going to do to do all sorts of cool science stuff. And down our rocket just a little bit so we don't go over the terminal velocity of our rocket. to 200 meters per second as we get closer and closer to higher terminal velocities getting out of the thick atmosphere. I really should look at that list sometime. I know there's a list of terminal velocities for a variety of altitudes, but I have, I have no idea what they look like, so eh. Alright, put this back up. Boom! Drop. Alright, very good. And we continue to climb. About to drop our secondary boosters. Oof. And now we begin our gravity turn. After we get into a stable orbit, I'm probably going to pause the recording and go ahead and set up all of our stuff. Because, goodness knows, you do not want to watch me set up maneuver nodes. I've made you watch that way too many times already. Slowly, slowly make our way. This is really freaking dark. Since it's so dark, may as well go into map view. Sound glitches. Just want to make sure that I indeed drop these as soon as possible so we don't waste any Delta V. And drop, there we go. Now this should, should, get us into orbit. Probably. Probably. They have done so before. We have plenty of electrical power, so no worries about that. Just go ahead and follow this yellow mark all the way over, always aiming directly where we're going for maximum efficiency. Alright, and that's 81 kilometers right there. That should be very good, I believe. We have, wow, we have lots of fuel left. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and fast forward our way through. Suddenly space music? Not yet? No? There we go. Welcome to space. Oh, 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 and by the way, apparently, apparently in the last episode I said that Venus was slightly larger than the Earth. That is not true, ladies and gentlemen. Do not believe my words. I am very, very sorry. The diameter of Venus is approximately 600 kilometers smaller than the, than the diameter of Earth. Earth is 12,700 and something, I believe. Venus is 12,100 and something. So do not believe me, Earth is slightly, slightly larger than Venus. Venus is slightly smaller than Earth, so... Don't, don't trust random YouTubers, they do make mistakes. Just like this past episode of Minecraft Pokemon, I said welcome back to Minecraft Dinosaurs. Yes, I am human and I do make mistakes, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will forgive me, but nonetheless. I, I wanted to apologize for that, I do not mean to spread misinformation. And if you guys point it out to me, I will indeed apologize, and I will give you the correct information. Oh, recent news from Mars Curiosity rover, actually, since we're sending a rover all the way to Duna. Apparently, ooh, 81 and 86. Okay, that's not perfect, but it's, it's close enough. Apparently, how much fuel do we have left? We don't really have that much fuel. But, uh, eh. I can, I can use it. Whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. Let's see if we can go ahead and check if everything is okay. 
But yeah, we will talk about the the Mars Curiosity rover news when we come back. So wait just a moment while I set up this maneuver node, and we shall be back in just a moment. Alright, and we're back. So, we are currently in the sphere of influence of Duna, but we are coming in at a very strange angle, and I am not 100% sure that we can, uh, fix this, but we're gonna try, we're gonna try. We're not gonna just let the rover be doomed to circle the sun forever, so we are going to attempt, attempt to get into this orbit by doing this burn here. I, uh, I have no idea if that's going to work or not, but eh, you know, let's go ahead and try it. We have 12 hours until our burn, so let's go ahead over to... There's Duna over there. Where is our maneuver node going to be? Apparently it's going to be right about here. I have already quick save just in case something goes terribly wrong. Let us go ahead and fast forward going to Duna while we talk about the new news from Curiosity on Mars. So Curiosity landed in what we believed to be at the time a crater named Gale Crater and has been taking various samples of the rocks near the Curiosity rover and has found all sorts of wonderful stuff, all sorts of wonderful information basically coming to the conclusion that there was indeed water on Mars' surface. At one point, Mars had higher atmospheric pressure, it had a real atmosphere, it was warmer, there was water on Mars, and it, it left all sorts of clues that it was there, like mudstone and... Uh... what? Magnetite, I think? Magnetite? All sorts of wonderful minerals that basically only form in the presence of neutral pH water, meaning that you could probably drink this stuff, assuming it wasn't filled with microorganisms that would kill you. And so, we now know that not only was there water all over Mars, which we've sort of known for a while, but now, like, no one would dare argue with it ever, but also we now know, based on various information, that basically Gale Crater is not a crater. It's a lake bed. Like, the entire crater used to be an ancient lake that existed probably for somewhere around, like, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. So, it was around for quite a while, it would have given any sort of microorganisms that developed on Mars plenty of time to live there, it was nice and stable, and it would have allowed them to evolve and become awesome, I don't know, other microorganisms, since clearly we haven't found any evidence for any sort of microorganisms or macroorganisms at all on Mars yet. But hey, you know, when you know that there was neutral pH water on the surface, and it was there for a really long time, you think? You know, if there was something there, it would have it would have had a nice stable place to live for the most part, and that's good to know. So this is this is taking a little bit too long. Ooh. I really wish I could change this with a little bit more control between Hello Ike, you're a beautiful moon. With a little bit more control between like this times and then this times. They're a little bit too dissimilar. The th it exponentially increases the speed at which you warp as you go up. And I'm not really okay with that. But we have plenty of Delta V left to get this thing where we want it to be. We just have to hope that these burns get pulled off alright. Okay, so that's 54 seconds. We want to start at about 31 seconds, so we have time to do our one minute burn. I'm almost certain that this, this stage is going to have enough fuel to do this, but you know, I'm a little bit worried nonetheless. Nine, eight, going at 31 seconds. And... Mark. <laughs> Here's to hoping that this doesn't doom us to a terrible Duna insertion death. I don't know. Things could end badly for Davy or Debbie. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but the Duna Environmental and Barometric Analyzer rover. Three, two, one, zero. Did this work? It did work. It didn't work as much as I thought it would. That's... Oh, wait, well... Eh, close enough. 
Uh, 37. Actually, that's that's not. We don't we don't want to go into the into the atmosphere. I guess we could go like a little bit into the atmosphere. Let's let's get rid of this. Do we have any sort of encounters with with Ike? No, we don't. That's that's good. I do not want an encounter with Ike. But I'm pretty sure the atmosphere of Duna begins at around maybe 42 kilometers. Yeah, maybe 42. I don't I don't really want to deal with going into the atmosphere, honestly. So we are already pointed to where our PE is in the daytime of Duna, or basically the daytime of Duna, which is good. I just want to make sure that this is... Ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. I did... I do not want to exit Duna's... No, no Duna escape for us. Okay, so apparently we're gonna have to go a little bit into the atmosphere, just, just a little bit, so that we do not accidentally escape Duna. I am... So sorry, planetary stuff. Please don't be mad at me. All right, I think that's good. Should be able to do some nice arrow breaking when we go around on the other side, and I don't know why. Why don't we go ahead and get rid of our lower stage here? This is a little bit too strong, and also we have some extra fuel right here. It should be no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in our solar panels now, just in case we hit the atmosphere and it tries to break off our solar panels. Would not want that to happen. And let's go ahead and decouple this. Boom. Goodbye, trash. There we go. Let's see how our orbit looks. Looks okay, looks okay. Let's go ahead and start to come closer to Duna. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, uh. Gonna make sure that that's far away from me. I, I don't want to hit that as debris. That would be terrible. Let's go ahead and swing around Duna. And when we are at our AP on the other side, we are going to lower our PE maybe to like 5 kilometers. I think 5 kilometers should be good. A uh, little bit of lag. A little bit of lag. Slowing us down as we pass over Duna. Are we, go are we going to like skip off of the atmosphere? Just a Yeah, yeah, we're going just a little bit into the atmosphere. Not too much. See, how far down does our AP come from hitting the atmosphere? Not... not much. It does come down, but not by much at all. As long as we don't have any Ike encounters, we should be good. Getting an Ike encounter would not be good right now, at all. looks like we're good. It looks like we are out of the atmosphere. Maybe? Ugh. The surface of Dune is strange and uncomfortable. Alright. Very good. Let's go ahead and zoom around to our AP. We are really far out there. I suppose we wouldn't have had any troubles. Just go ahead and go into the atmosphere from the first... Yeah, we probably should have done that. That wouldn't have been that bad. As we go around and slow it down. 
because we do not want to skip through Duna's atmosphere again. We want to come in for our landing this time. I don't want to do any burns, like, out here beyond Ike, because I am very worried about accidentally setting up an Ike encounter. I do not want to do that at all. No, no Ike encounters for me. None. Alright, we're good. Let's see if we can set up a nice little encounter here. Our PE is currently 38. I want to quick save. We have no electric charge. Our solar panels are not facing the sun. We ran out of all 835 of our electric charge. Uh... Alright, so clearly that is not good. We need to... Go around again, I guess. Okay, everyone, and we're back. That took way too long to fix, so basically what I had to do was I had to follow my little probe around on no time warp whatsoever and wait, because once you run out of power, your... Your, what is this, SAS also stops working, so you start spinning just a tiny little bit. But unfortunately, whenever our little probe, Davy, was facing towards the sun, the SAS would kick back on and then try to turn it away from the sun. So I had to basically get, just wait until there was just enough power from randomly floating and twisting towards the sun to turn off the SAS so that it would stay pointed that way and then put up our large solar array which is actually quite small. So yeah, that was really stressful, but fortunately we have we've succeeded. We now have control of Davy again, so we will not be landing next episode. We will be landing this episode. So let's go ahead and take a look at our map. We are at 39. We I'm pretty sure we don't even need a maneuver node actually. Let's go ahead and just ah. Just go ahead and fire retrograde. I'm pretty sure this will work. I think. There we go. Nice. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to bring this down to maybe like... Five, maybe four. Maybe three? Yeah, three. Three will be fine, right? No, nothing, nothing bad could ever happen going down to three. And since we now have all of our electricity, ooh, that is uh, a little bit frightening. Where did Duna go? There's Duna. Since we have all of our electricity again, apparently we are now upside down. I don't know which way are we going to be going. This is so disorientating. Disorienting. Disorientating. I don't know my words. Anyway, let's go ahead and quick save. And let's head on down to Duna, see what happens. Once we get very close to the atmosphere, I'm going to pull our solar panels back in because I do not want to have our solar panels out while we are entering the atmosphere going very, very fast. So. Okay, I'm pretty sure... maybe? No. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our SAS and pull in our solar panels. That should be good. That should not use up too much of our power. We have like 835. It'll... Let's go ahead and turn ourselves to face the sun too, just in case. There we go. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's face the sun and now let's go in. What is wrong with this camera? It has no idea which way it wants to go. Can't wait till we get out of orbital view. Alright, here we come. Looks like the Valis Marineris. At least on Mars. Giant, giant canyon on Mars. 
What is wrong with this camera? I can't figure out which way it wants me to go. <laughs> I, I want us to no longer be on the orbital view, if, if at all possible. Okay, so we are now currently in the atmosphere. We can still move. So, which way are we going? I'm gonna go ahead and burn here to help slow us down since we have we have a ton of fuel. I don't really know why we have so much fuel. Getting to Duna is quite easy, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start burning here. Just to help slow us down. Probably is going to be a little bit steep, but it'll be fine. Maybe I should start thinking about parachutes. Nah, we're still too high. So I guess we're not going to get any sort of re entry effects until we hit the actual thick atmosphere. If even then. Let's go ahead and decouple. Boom! And parachutes! Turn off SAS. We are still going really, really fast. Holy Jesus! Oh! Oh, we're okay! Ooh, what is that? Goodbye, debris. Oh, those, those parachutes really... Wow. That was what? Ooh, rocks. I turned on the landscape scatter, so we should be seeing some rocks and stuff. I want to... I want to like go down and check out some rocks. Ooh, there are lots of rocks. I like this. 7.7 meters per second. That that should be plenty slow. It's a little bit faster than we land on on Kerbin due to the thinner atmosphere, but I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. I'm, I think these have impact tolerance up to eight. So this will be no problem. And... Hold your breath! Touched! Oh, 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 no, no. Terrible things are happening. Terrible things are happening. Come on, get back, get back up, get back up. Rover! Rover! Come on, get back up on your wheels! Get back up on your wheels, man. Okay, fine. Go this way. Get back on your wheels. Uh. So, we broke one of our wheels. I... I don't know how bad that is. Um... Let's see. Uh. Okay, so maybe... Oh, uh, this is not good. Okay, good, good. You can, you can keep that there, right? And then we go into docking controls. Put on the brakes. That that wasn't good. Okay, hold us, hold us there. Um, there is not a rock very close to here. But I do believe we can still control our rover despite one of the wheels breaking. Wonderful. Okay, so now let's see. Go back to staging. And release the parachutes. Uh, release the par- Oh god. Are we okay? I think we're still good. Um, admittedly, the rover seems a little bit broken, but 
We'll be okay. <clears throat> and we can go to a rock later. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check out some of the science that we're going to be getting. You observe the goo. It does nothing interesting on the surface of... of Duna? Alright. What about the temperature scan? Collected and recorded the temperature scan? Okay, 64 science. Atmospheric pressure scan. The atmosphere is pretty thin even at the surface. You don't think parachutes or wings would work very well here. Well, they did sort of work well, except that we flipped. Keep the data. Seismic scan. 400 science. Wow, the sensor gives insight to the seismic activity of Duna. Not very interesting stuff on Duna, yo. You, sh you guys should probably fix that. But anyway, we have landed on Duna. Everything went basically according to plan, except for our one little... Our one little accident with our wheels, but that's okay, because we can still basically control our rover. Not very well, but, you know, it's... It's... Uh, uh, it's okay, I suppose. So wonderful! Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. My name is Magnius. Don't forget, if you want to have a rover or a probe or a Kerbal named after you, to let me know below in the comments. And I will see you next time.